What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and today we're here with a massive guide in showing you how to pick the right power supply for your next PC build. And when it comes to PC building, power supplies can really get overlooked with the attention mainly going to your CPU, your GPU and even the right RGB LED kit. But your power supply is almost the most important part of a system as without a power supply, the system won't even boot up. In fact, there wouldn't be any lights in there because there would be no power inside this guy. So simply picking the right power supply is very, very important. But unlike a CPU or something like that, power supplies are really difficult to actually pick. And also too, much like your CPU cooler, your power supply can be moved from build to build. So picking one that will last your current build and maybe even into your next build as the trend of computers seem to be going less and less in power in terms of the past previous years. So the power supply is actually really important and your next rig may be even able to use it thanks to the fact, again, efficiency is going through the roof. So come along today as we walk you through the steps that you need to consider when buying a new power supply. Now for the sake of keeping things simple, we got a list set up in that description box so you can easily jump to different categories in this type of video as I've split up everything that I usually consider when I pick a power supply into easy little categories. So check that description box if you want to go ahead and find each individual timestamps to jump to for different topics that we do talk about. And also too, before we do jump into it, I've also too left a whole bunch of links down in that description box in how to do things like power supply calculations and so much more, so check that description box. But nevertheless, let's jump into it first and foremost with form factor. Now form factor is one of those things that is one of the most important and most dictating parts of your PC build in terms of the power supply. If you're building a little tiny PC, there's no point squeezing a massive 1200 watt Corsair beast of a power supply in an ITX form factor, it just won't work and probably will go downhill really, really fast. So to do so, what we need to do is jump on your case manufacturer's website and have a look at the power supply dimensions or specifications that it can support. If you can't find exactly the measurements or exactly what form factor the case supports, there's a general rule of thumb that you can go by or just simply jump on Google Images and have a look at what some example builds are having in their systems. But the general rule of thumb is generally going to apply as follows. Most ATX, MATX and Micro ATX cases will be able to be fitted fine with an ATX ATX power supply, an extended ATX power supply, or even something like a small form factor unit. However, with those being said, with the people out there who are building in a mini ITX form factor case, you'll need to be looking at a small form factor power supply, or SFF. These are usually a lot more smaller and take up a lot less space than your standard typical ATX options, and are again more suited for small form factors. Yes, they are backwards compatible, so SFF will fit in ATX, but not the other way around, unfortunately. So first and foremost, you need to figure out what form factor and size you are looking at. Now also too, don't fall into the trap of seeing a 1200 watt power supply and assuming it's going to be the same size as a 500 watt unit. It's pretty well known at this point that sort of the 1000 and sort of high wattage rated power supplies are usually a little bit bigger than the standard typical size 5 and 600 watt options. This is mainly because, well, more wattage needs more space, so it's kind of a given right there. For example, take this Corsair 1200 watt power supply and compare it to this Cooler Master 500 watt unit. We can see here that size is way different. Doesn't matter the different companies manufacture these guys. In fact, let's throw up a Corsair one right here. We can see that the 1200 watt unit is significantly bigger than the smaller 500 watt unit. So do keep in mind that length is also two and options and not all cases will support all power supplies out there. So do your measurements, take a look online and see what other people are doing to make sure you get the correct size here. But once we get the correct size, we can then move on to the price point that we want to consider. So the second thing that I personally like to consider when picking up a power supply is definitely that price point. A lot of people like to go ahead and throw things like wattages and other things first, however price is a really great place to start when looking for a power supply. For me personally, I usually like to look in that $100 to $150 price range for most budget and entry level systems. The reason why I fit in that sort of $100 to $150 price range is they're getting a really good bang for the buck with decent components, decent wattages and also to overall 
decent specifications without going too cheap. And when it comes to sort of that mid to high end systems, I usually like to look in that $150 to $200 system. And obviously the more you're spending on a computer, the more you should also do spend on your power supply. And it's usually the, again, the best sort of bang for the buck kind of market. That $150 to $200 for your high end system gives you really great value without going overboard. And that $100 to $150 price point is again, really great for your more budget entry level systems. Now, don't get me wrong, there's actually some decent power supplies under $100, but let's face it, it's not good to cheap out on your power supply, so it's better to pick up something in that $100 to $150 price range, have no problems for the life of your product, and roll with it rather than cheaping out a little bit trying to save money here and there and then having it die a few months in. And also too, don't fall into the trap of buying these horrible, horrible gray kind of OEM looking power supply. Sure, they may be cheap, but they are god awful and will blow up. It's just a matter of time before they do. And in terms of blowing up, it could either just kill the power supply or it could kill the rest of your system. So let's say you save $50 on that power supply and it runs for three months and then blows up. Not only do you have to buy a new power supply, but there's also to a chance that that power supply may take out other components components in your system. So you've saved $50 today, but tomorrow you may be spending an extra thousand dollars on building a brand new system because you blew it up with a cheap power supply. They're horrible, terribly built, usually have terrible ratings, and if it does manage to last the life of your computer, they'll start to buzz and make weird fan noises because they're just not made out of good quality components. Time and time again, I've seen hundreds of these power supplies come into, whether it be me working in a computer store or just me sort of going around helping people. I've seen them time and time again, and they just keep on going bad. So if you are looking at a power supply trying to save some money, please do not buy these cheap power supplies. They're terrible and just do not last. So it is generally recommended to slightly overbuy your power supply so you don't run into the issues of cheap kind of components and failed options. But if you want a general rule of thumb, it is usually as follows. If you can fit in that $100 to $150 price point for mid sort of entry level systems, that's definitely fine. However, if you want a bit more of a scalable option, this is generally my rule of thumb. If you're building a $1,000 system, look at a $100 power supply. If you're building a $2,000 system, look at a $200 power supply, $3,000 system $300 power supply. Basically just knock a zero off the closest thousand and that's usually what I like to spend on a power supply. It's not always going to give you the best sort of rule of thumb but it's a great starting point to actually go by if you can't adhere to that $150 to $100 price point for your particular build. Now also too the final thing I do want to bring up is do keep in mind that prices for power supplies are slightly inflated on the higher end options thanks to coin miners out there. So what was your typical $350 or so dollar power supply is now in that $400 to $500 price range and high end power supplies like a 1100 watt, 1200 watt or even a 1000 watt power supplies are actually really expensive at the moment. So do keep in mind the power supplies can be a little bit inflated in terms of their price point. But again, the second thing I do like to consider is picking a price point that I do want to spend at so I can pick the rest of the specifications. But speaking of specifications, let's take a look at ratings. Now ratings is one of those things that you really really needed to keep in mind when buying a power supply as not all power supplies are created equal. Sure they may be the same price and sure they may have the same wattage which we'll touch on in just a moment but rating is where we definitely see the separation between good quality power supplies and not so good quality power supplies. Now these ratings are rated in no rating, 80 plus, 80 plus bronze, 80 plus silver, 80 plus gold, platinum, and also to titanium. Basically on a simple way, the better the quality of the metal, the better the quality of the power supply. So an 80 plus platinum will perform better than an 80 plus bronze. That's basically the idea of how it goes. Now these numbers basically refer to the efficiency of the power supply. And obviously the more efficient it is, the better it's going to be for you. Whether it be less money spent on the bill with a more efficient power supply or if you're not paying for the bill and getting someone else to pay, what it can also do for you is actually run at more quiet operations, kick out less heat and overall last you a whole lot longer. Usually power supplies that are rated for gold, silver and even platinum power supplies have way better components in them than your more budget and crappy options that come in with things like 80 plus ratings or even no ratings on the box. So not only do you get those benefits there but again it comes in with less heat 
meaning you can have things like zero fan mode, allowing you for much more silent operation. So if you plan to go ahead and build yourself a silent type of PC, grabbing yourself something like an 80 plus gold or even 80 plus platinum can result in a very quiet power supply as the components are very well rated and they don't need to be cooled as much because, well, they're a lot better quality and the fan doesn't need to spin up, which is a really nice thing. And another thing that ratings also do give you an idea of is how much you can actually load up a power supply. Let's take a standard 80 plus power supply that's rated for 500 watts. There's a very high chance that that 80 plus power supply probably won't even be able to put out the full 500 watts it's actually rated for and maybe closer to 450 watts. Whereas a higher end platinum, gold or even titanium power supplies are well known at this point for being able to supply their limit of power and even sometimes even more. For example, a little while back I was actually doing some testing on a power supply which was 500 watts. It was an 80 plus gold power supply and I didn't even realize that I was running it at 600 watts. Once I realized, I obviously stopped doing that. But for me, I was able to run a 500 watt gold plus power supply at 600 watts. Sure, the fan was definitely spinning up, but at the end, they didn't blow up or catch fire or anything like that, and it was able to run like that. Now, whilst these power supplies can definitely do this, it is definitely not recommended to run a power supply at more wattage than what is actually recommended on the box. So whilst I might have gotten lucky, at the end of the day, it is super not recommended. The reason why I do bring it up is it also do shows that these high end components do offer better performance and thus a better quality power supply overall. So if you need a 700 watt unit, get a 700 watt unit. Don't buy a 651 and hope you'll be fine. Please do the right wattage that you need for the right build you are doing. Then moving on, we have wattage. Now wattage is one of the first things that a lot of people consider, but actually should be one of the last things you consider. And in this list is one of the last things that we'll actually consider. Now picking wattage is usually pretty simple. Jump on a power supply calculator and calculate what wattage you need, and then add about 150 to 200 watts extra to the build that you may be doing. Especially if you're doing overclocking, it's definitely important to add an extra 200 or so watts, just in case you need some extra power when doing your overclocking. However, if you not planning to overclock, add yourself about a hundred or so extra watts just in case you want to add something down the line. So let's take a look at an example. If we plan out a PC build with an Intel k CPU and a video card that you plan to overclock, let's say it needs say 600 watts of power for its actual running. So what I'd usually do is then look at that 650 to 700 watt power supply range as that's going to give us a bit of headroom over the system. And with the 700 watt power supply, we will definitely be able to get some overclocks going on here. We may even want to look into the 800 watt power supply range. However, that is definitely getting a little bit into the overkill range range, especially if you're overclocking with mainstream hardware. If you're jumping up into the enthusiast market, you'll need to pick up again a reflected enthusiast type of power supply. With high wattages, decent ratings and overall good quality components, it's also too important to look at the rest of the power supply when picking one up. However, I do want to note, in recent years we've actually seen the power consumption actually trend downwards, so a computer from six years ago will use more power uh, in terms of out of the wall socket and deliver less processing processing power, whereas what we have here today with more processing power but less power drawn from the wall socket. So do keep in mind that you might have needed 800 watts of power a couple years ago, but now we could easily get away with something like 600 or even 550 watts for a high-end gaming system, depending on the spec. But again, do always do your calculations and add an extra bit more on top of it, especially if you're going to be overclocking so you don't run into any well issues when it comes to power supplies. If you do buy a power supply that just can't provide enough power, the symptoms that you'll see is basically when you load up the system, it'll just either click off or it will blue screen or things will just slow down unexpectedly. This is a good sign that the power supply just can't provide enough power and the components can't spin up to their full speed that they do require. So if you do need more power, you'll probably just have to go ahead and get one. And whether you're overclocking, looking to add extra fans, some extra LEDs, hard drives or whatever it may be, the wattage for your power supply is also too pretty important when it comes to that. So jump on a calculator which I've left down below, or even jump on a forum and see what other people are building with a similar spec system for their power supply options. But do make sure you have the right wattage and don't underbuy your power supply. 
And then finally, we have connectors. Now, for a lot of builders out there, we really don't need to actually worry about what connectors are on our power supply. However, for those of you who are building high-end system or just want to be completely sure that you are getting the right power supply, you may want to look at what connectors you are running. A lot of the time, power supplies, especially the ones that are all up on the wall behind me, like these two guys right here and a couple of guys over there, will provide enough connections for just about any build on the market. With enough SATA ports for adding a couple of hard drives in there, enough Molex for all the fans and LEDs you need, and also to enough video card connections for all the video cards you're going to need, most power supplies out there are going to be perfectly fine for 90% of builds. However, with that being said, if you're building on something like the X399 out of AMD, something like the X299 out of Intel, you may also too want to consider what connections you have there, as those two examples usually require two 8-pin CPU connectors, meaning you're going to have to look for a power supply that can power up this system. So if you are building into the enthusiast market, do write yourself a checklist of what connectors you need, and then go ahead and cross-compare with what the manufacturer is listing. Especially again, coming over to the AMD side with Threadripper and their upcoming Epic chips, they actually need dual power to actually run at full speeds and also to actually run properly. Don't get me wrong, you can definitely run your Threadripper system on a single 8-pin connection, but it is best to follow what they recommend, and they recommend dual 8-pin power connections. Also too, if you plan to do something like multi-video cards, a whole ton of hard drives in there, do make sure you have enough connectors in there that will allow you to run these specific components. But overall, it's usually not too much of a worry when it comes to picking out the connectors, but again, if you are building something super high-end, you may want to consider what plugs you are getting. Now, if you did go out and buy a power supply and you've realized you need an extra PCI connector, you need an extra SATA port, don't worry, as a lot of the time you can get adapters from Molex or other standards to the connection you do need. So, it's not usually a recommended thing to do, but if you've already bought a power supply and you've just realized you've missed out a couple plugs, you can get adapters out there. So, that's about it for this guide. Now, some of us may also to be inclined to also to consider a color scheme for the power supply, but a lot of the power supplies out there on the market don't exactly come in with the best color scheme, so yeah, it might be something you want to consider, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be a deal breaker if the power supply is the wrong color scheme. A lot of the time, it's pretty easy to customize a power supply, so do keep that in mind that it's fairly easy to do that. So picking a power supply can definitely be pretty hard for some people out there, but following some basic steps and doing some calculations can easily narrow down what power supply you do need to buy. Brands is also to another thing that you may want to consider, but at this point in time, a lot of the brands that were making crappy power supplies have gone out of business. So really, in terms of what's on the market today, are usually pretty high quality power supplies. Definitely you can pick a brand if you want, but usually I just like to compare all the power supplies in the price point, in the wattage, and also to in the ratings that I do want, with the connections I do want, and I pick out of there rather than sticking with a single brand. Some brands are better than others for some builds, but at the end of the day, you should be picking the power supply and what it can deliver, rather than the manufacturer it's actually listing. But otherwise, guys, there is a whole bunch bunch of links down in that description box to go ahead and help you actually pick out a power supply and let me know down in the comment sections if there's something you also to consider when picking a power supply. Do you consider the color scheme that comes with it or do you consider the brand that actually makes it? Otherwise guys, thanks all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.